Bonsoir à tous et so good evening, everyone. So welcome to this public conference on the theme of hydrogen. So this is the second part of our digital forum on hydrogen. So we're talking about hydrogen a lot at the moment. You probably have a lot of questions. So what are we talking about exactly? What are the uses? What, uh, why are we investing so much in hydrogen? So in theory, you'll have the answers to these questions uh, by the end of our, of our talks. So we have lots of experts here to talk to you. So we have here the president of the Burgundy Franche Comté region, who was here this morning also, uh, Marie-Guitte Dufay. So what we can say is that the region intends to be carbon neutral. Can you hear me? Can Mrs. Dufay hear us? So I was just saying that the region intends to be um, carbon neutral, which is a fine ambition. Yes, so, so we'd like to um, stop using fossil energies as whenever possible. So, for example, in transport, um, obviously, to stop using petrol. And also, um, of course, we use a lot of energy in buildings to heat, for heating. So we need to um, begin a movement of replacing fossil energies with uh, green energies. So hydrogen uh, is a vector of a particularly virtuous energy form because it doesn't give off any uh, carbon dioxide. So our region is ahead in this field because researchers in our university and the Technological University in Belfort, Montbéliard, have been working on producing electricity from fuel cells. And that gives us levers to move forward. And it, as it happens, our territory um, between um, research activities and the different developments in um, renewable energies in Burgundy and the presence of a lot of companies who are um, taking the step into this transition. So, uh, for example, we have companies, we have a company called Bytech, which have been working on storing hydrogen. We have companies which, uh, which uh, work on, uh, Gossin is a company which works on port equipment, which uh, is also creating vehicles that, uh, that use um, hydrogen as their fuel. Uh, they're based at Ericourt in the north of Franche-Comté. We have a lot of other companies that are also uh, following up with this. But it's very important to know that it's, uh, it's a good thing that companies are taking this, um, moving into this energy transition, but the public authorities have to do the same thing with, um, so that in our cities that we have hydrogen powered uh, buses, taxis, um, trains, but we also use it as energy for um, our housing. So there are, there's a very wide range of everyday uses, which is uh, directly of interest to the public in general. It's not an academic subject, it's a subject for everybody. It concerns all of us. Uh, what's also very good in our region is that the cities, the territorial authorities, companies, researchers in the universities are all working hand in hand. Um, in a kind of pack um, so that they can turn our territory, our region, into one that is um, working hard to, um, to leave behind fossil energies and that we're managing to move forward. And this, um, this forum uh, that we're, which has begun today 
which should have been um, an event, um, a seminar, which a conference that people would have attended to. It's only a virtual conference because of the COVID crisis. So this is evidence of the interest that there is in this subject. I think we have about a thousand participants and a lot of um, business meetings and exchanges that have been programmed, uh, scheduled for the conference. So do you think that this is, um, what do you expect to get out of this conference? You want people to um, realize the importance of the subject? Yes, I hope that we need to realize at national level that this region is that we, which is a very industrial region. I think we need people to realize that we are investing massively in something which is very important for the future so that we can create the conditions for the future that we need to use hydrogen. We have huge industrial skills here. There's this connection with industry. There's a true industrial DNA in this region. And we're using this to move forward. We're not looking backwards, we're looking forwards. And that's what we want to show and what to we want to put across through this conference. And, and we want the general public also to realize that this is a subject that is for everybody and not just for experts. So thank you. Uh, so this morning we were talking about taxis in Paris, in Paris so that's uh, fantastic to see how the uh, taxi owners are investing in hydrogen. So this is a, 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 a sector which is very polluting. Uh, as, as part of the, uh, it's, it's good to see how they're investing in a virtuous practice which is converting to hydrogen. So thank you. So now we'll move on to the prefect of the territory of Belfort, territory of Belfort, Mr. Jean-Marie Girier. So I think we could say that the state uh, is stepping up. Um, I think they're investing something like seven billion euros. So it looks like the, the signals are on the green, as we could say. So I think that in spite of this very particular period that we're living through at the moment in our country, is that um, in spite of all that, we have this national strategy, which is backed up by a European strategy. And this is coming together with the um, stimulus package to, to recover from the COVID crisis. So, so and I'd really like to congratulate the local authorities in this region. Um, and I think we'll, the stimulus package, et cetera, will help them to accelerate uh, their investments in this area. So we're talking about billions over the next few years. So obviously, I think that there is um, companies local entrepreneurs, companies here uh, haven't waited for this to uh, multiply their efforts in research and investment, but I think this investment will now, public investment will now be an accelerator. So the ADEM, the National um, Energy Agency, is investing in various different projects on the industrial development and on the usage side. So we have in, in the north of Franche-Comté an, 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 eco, an ecosystem with excellent university research. We have companies like uh, Forestia. We have a diverse range of products, whether it's stationary projects, um, mobility, industrial usages. So the, the state wants to invest on, on the two ends of the chain, if you like, in um, usages and industrial development. So uh, Madame Dufay talked about a pack of people working together. So I think this conference is um, a showcase, and it's just um, happening a few days after the National Council for Hydrogen meeting. And that means that here we can see that in Burgundy, French Comté, that we can see that things are really happening on the ground. 
So we were pioneers and precursors, and we have to remain so. So we have existing authorities, existing projects, um, who are trying to initiate and facilitate um, progress. So there's a kind of completeness and a comprehensive um, coverage. So I think when companies want to come and set up here or develop here, they come and meet um, elected representatives, the regional authorities, and they can see that all these authorities work and do everything that they can to help them to develop. Um, not just a hydrogen industry, but there are a lot of... Um, I'd just like to add that, that we're very proud of what's happening in Franche-Comté, but I, as president of the region, I don't want us to forget that there are very um, high-performing sites like Dijon, which is um, introducing a fleet of heavy goods vehicles using um, hydrogen from methane. There will also be a station, um, a refueling station is going to be set up in um, Auxerre to fuel buses. So there are, I just wanted to make sure that everybody in the whole region uh, is mentioned because they are all, the different cities are all contributing um, in their own ways. So that's very you're very enthusiastic about your local authorities and their contribution. I must say that there is a great deal of enthusiasm, um, entrepreneurial projects, university academic projects. Um, so we do have a, a lot of tools and schemes um, to support these projects, also um, industrial projects, but also training so that we can create jobs in the future. So the region has a lot of industrial know-how which is deeply rooted in this region. So, so we find that there are two pillars in the hydrogen world. So, there's, so we have this ambition to qualify our young engineers and technicians so that they can then mobilize on the, in the same industry. So thank you very much. So let's move on to the first part of this program. So we have a, a number of um, guests who have come into the studio. Uh, most of them are local. From Belfort. So the first of all, we have Daniel Issel, who represents the um, CNRS, the research body. And you've been working on hydrogen for many years. So first of all, can you tell us a little bit more about what we mean when we're talking about hydrogen? What is hydrogen? What are we talking about? So good, good afternoon, everybody. So maybe you don't know that 90% of the, the world is hydrogen. So it would be a pity not to take an interest in hydrogen. So that's uh, what we call atomic hydrogen. Um, probably everybody remembers at school learning the atomic table and the so, but we could use, um, create hydrogen as a product which can be used for many different things. So how do we produce hydrogen? So unfortunately, when we're talking about the ecolog ecological transition, it's a, it's a pity to say it, but most of it is produced from coal or um, natural gas, which is what we call gray or brown hydrogen, which is not clean hydrogen. So there's, so there's 50 shades of gray, if you like, yes, well. 
So grey hydrogen is, is hydrogen, which is 95% of the hydrogen we use at the program at the present time, which is uh, mostly from fossil fuels. Then we have blue hydrogen, which is either from the sequestration of carbon, and then we have green hydrogen, which is clean hydrogen, which is produced by renewable energy sources. So if you put um, electrolysis, is you put um, an electric wire in, in, in a tub of water, then you have bubbles at one end, and those bubbles are hydrogen. Everybody did this experiment at school. So when you're talking about uh, producing massive amounts of hydrogen, you need there are possibility, two possibilities. You can have massive centralized production or localized decentralized production on local sites. So that is the tendency, I think. So it is possible to produce hydrogen locally. That's how the ideal so solution. So that can be done locally using uh, renewable sources of energy, such as uh, photovoltaic panels, for example, on, uh, on a roof. There's also wind power. Uh, that's uh, usually wind turbines are produce more um, electricity than a, than a solar panel, but you could put um, an electrolyzer at the foot of a, of a wind turbine. Uh, that would produce um, uh, hydrogen, which is what we call decarbonized hydrogen. So, so renewable energies are going to um, allow us to develop the hydrogen sector. Uh, but there are um, there's also other solutions, for example, biomass. There's also methanization, which allow us to produce hydrogen for stationary solutions, for example. So um, hydrogen is already being used, it's a reality, uh, particularly in transport. So we were talking about the hype taxis in Paris. Um, there are car manufacturers who are developing uh, light vehicles with hydrogen. What we're talking about is electric cars that use hydrogen. So we could use hydrogen to develop. Um, it's a way of overcoming some of the problems of electric cars, for example, recharging time and the autonomy question. So you could, if you have a correctly dimensioned syst hydrogen system in a car, you have the same kind of range as a, a petrol car would have. So, so, but heavy mobility, what we call heavy duty mobility, heavy lorries, is also um, particularly lends itself to, and ships as well, also lend themselves particularly to the use of hydrogen. So, here's a short um, video about this unique um, taxi system in Paris. It's the only one of, the kind, of its kind in the world. Bonjour, je m'appelle Nabil, j'ai 38 ans et je suis chauffeur hype depuis 3 ans. Je suis passé par là avec ma voiture thermique et j'ai vu cette station qui a été mise en place lors de la COP21. J'étais d'abord intrigué et j'ai trouvé le concept très intéressant et je me suis présenté, j'ai été recruté. Et là, c'était pour moi une opportunité de changer mes habitudes sans les changer réellement. Toutes les sociétés de transport ont privilégié jusqu'à maintenant le diesel pour des raisons économiques. Il y a des impératifs écologiques qui se sont imposés entre temps, et ce qui fait que sur mes 14 ans... So, this is taxi drivers explaining why they decided to um, get involved in the adventure and try um, a hydrogen car. pleinement des avantages des voitures électriques à hydrogène, donc l'absence de bruit, de vibration. En tant que chauffeur de taxi, on parcourt en moyenne euh, entre 200 et 220 km. Sachant qu'avec qu la Toyota Mirai, on a 500 km d'autonomie, euh, ça couvre très largement l'amplitude d'une journée de travail. Donc, ils expliquent que c'est plus quiet, moins de bruit, c'est plus clair, la range est très bonne. 
Donc en termes opérationnels, pour un chauffeur de taxi, et pour moi en tout cas, ça ne pose absolument aucun problème du fait que ce soit un véhicule qui roule à l'hydrogène. La recharge des véhicules d'hydrogène se fait d'une manière encore plus propre que celle du, des carburants traditionnels, essence ou gasoil. Euh, dans la mesure où on a juste le pistolet à brancher, on laisse le plein se faire. Et so he's just explaining how easy it is to refuel. La différence du coup avec cleaner than petrol. On ne tient pas le pistolet pendant l'opération. You don't have to hold the gun. Qui ne sentent pas le, le gasoil ou l'essence après le plein. Donc ça. There's no smell. On est devenu des mini experts euh, malgré nous et pour le bonheur des gens qu'on transporte. Donc je dois dire que c'est très confortable. Uh, just um, say that the advantages for the passenger are that it's comfortable, it's quiet. It's très agréable parce que très silencieux et puis c'est tout nouveau donc on n'a pas de questions à poser au chauffeur sur l'autonomie, sur le prix, sur le fonctionnement de la pile à hydrogène, toutes ces choses-là que je connaissais pas et que je connais maintenant. Alors nous avons deux types de clients, nous avons un client qui nous prennent à la volée dans la rue. Euh, et nous avons aussi un autre type de clients qui sont du coup des fervents de l'hydrogène et qui nous réservent euh, en passant par l'application. Uh, they just explain the type of customers who use hydrogen taxis, um, either people who hail them in the, in the street or, or companies that um, want to use them regularly for um, ecological reasons. qui sont présentés par ce type de véhicule améliore en fait le quotidien du chauffeur qui, euh, qui est débarrassé du bruit, des vibrations et qui s'offre à lui-même un confort de conduite et qui permet au, à ses clients d'être transportés dans de bonnes conditions. So just to sum up, it's um, a series of advantages for uh, the driver and the passenger. So one of the questions that we people ask about hydrogen is, is it safe? So this is the question that always comes back. So hydrogen is an, a vector of energy, and so it's a way of storing energy. So phys from a physical point of view, so whatever energy you're storing, um, you need to take precautions. And obviously, if you don't, then you could have problems. But, uh, but now we know how to control um, hydrogen. We know how to make it safe. Et, euh, des organismes nationaux, au-delà même de la France, so, uh, ont lots of, uh, des tests de sécurité. There have been lots of safety tests uh, done uh, not just in France, but by international organizations. Uh, tests which are done in real conditions. Uh, for example, uh, a tunnel company in the Alps would prefer to have uh, hydrogen electric vehicles rather than uh, combustion engine vehicles. They think it's safer in tunnels. So, let's move on to Bruno Jamais, Bruno, who is going to uh, tell us if we have any questions from the public. Alors, pas de questions encore. En tout cas, moi, j'en ai une. Ah, no questions euh, yet, but I do have one. So, Daniel, he said, you said that hydrogen cars are, um, are electric cars, but it's the fuel cell, not a standard battery that generates the electricity to run the car as it's running. So you have a tank with pressurized hydrogen, which is then converted to generate electricity uh, to operate an electric vehicle. So, um, so the batteries that you have in a normal car, normal electric car, is replaced by the hydrogen tank. So, hydrogen, um, the re reaction is a very simple one, which is discovered almost 200 years ago. So, what you can produce is electricity, heat, and the only rejected substance is water. So, let's move on to the next sequence with Forestia.
Et je me tourne vers Nicolas Darko. So, Nicolas Darko. So, at Foresia, you are the strategy and the zero emissions division director. So, you work at a site uh, not far from here, so Foresia Clean Mobility, which, you, which is a world, a global research center on hydrogen tanks. So this is a center that was uh, created a few years ago. We've invested over 200 million euros. So uh, this is a reality, a hydrogen tank. So our center has four missions. So innovation to develop new technologies to improve the performance of our storage systems, the design of the system, etc. The second, uh, second purpose is to develop specific solutions for our particular customers, for particular vehicles. After that, there are two missions which relate to industrialization. So we're going to um, creating larger capacity factories. So the first one will probably be in the region as well. So there will be also um, a production system um, and a small plant to supply existing customers. So a short video on Foresia and what it does. Le réchauffement climatique est le défi majeur de notre époque. C'est aujourd'hui que nous devons agir et créer une voie durable pour la mobilité zéro émission. So we need to create zero emission solutions to overcome global warming. Parfaitement adapté aux véhicules commerciaux et aux poids lourds. So hydrogen is a perfect solution for logistics and transport. Au cours des dernières années, Forestia a investi plus de 160 millions d'euros dans la R&D, la production, so les investissements et 160 million euros in R&D in this area. So now they're part of a world of a global ecosystem. We are supported by the local authority, the regional authority, and we've created a global um, research center. So they test and um, approve hydrogen storage systems. Nous améliorons la performance de nos réservoirs grâce à l'utilisation de capteurs et de l'intelligence artificielle. So we use artificial intelligence and sensors to improve the capacities of our um, systems and our, our storage systems. We try to make them more sustainable, more recyclable, and so we're working on the future generations of um, Nous avons lancé la production storage systems. De de We've started to produce um, systems for, for um, car manufacturers and truck manufacturers for the future, such companies such as Hyundai. La décennie de l'hydrogène a commencé. So the next decade will be the decade of hydrogen, and Foresia is a pioneer. So we saw these storage tanks, uh, they're like a kind of barrels for vessels for LPG and natural gas, but the pressure is much higher. It's true, it's, uh, they're made of a composite, it's the best compromise between resistance and weight. In mobility today, the applications apply to 350 to 7 bars, which means that we can increase uh, the energy density of the uh, stock toward hydrogen. The uh, vessels are part of a full system, which we design uh, by Foresia, which allows a refill uh, time of a few minutes and ensure the safety of the entire system. In the vehicle hype that we saw 
or light vehicles of the same type, the hydrogen is stored into three cells of uh, seven kilos with an autonomy of a uh, range of uh, 100 kilometers. So we, we have more or less 500 kilometers. Five, six, seven hundred kilometers. And the system uh, weighs about 200 kilos. If you compare to a battery with the same range, uh, the complete system would be about uh, 500 kilos. This is the advantage of hydrogen. We have uh, a long range. We have a uh, quick refill and a uh, lighter weight. So uh, the uh, load f uh, for commercial uh, vehicles is much higher. So this is the application in automobile. Uh, the, uh, currently, this is for trucks, but tomorrow it could be for ships, for a plane. The hydrogen is a, is a reality. Uh, we are uh, we have three automotive customers for trucks and utility vehicles with Renault and PSA. We also work on applications other than automotive, for example, logistics vehicles from Gossin, and uh, Gossin is going to tell us about them uh, later, and also on other non-automotive uh, applications, which are visions on uh, uh, hydrogen for the future years. For our customers, we are working on three successive generations of uh, tanks. And we want to be able to uh, do more than 100,000 uh, vessels. Given the advantages of hydrogen, uh, the weight, the uh, range, and the flexibility, but also the total cost of fuels, uh, we think uh, that they will be more competitive uh, than uh, diesel on some applications, for example, over the day. The decay, decade. We imagine about 500,000 uh, uh, vehicles on the road uh, and 5 million up to 2030. So now we're going to talk about heavy vehicles. Heavy vehicles mobility, we're going to talk about it with uh, our speakers who are here physically. From H2 CIS, we also have Jean-Patrick Masson for uh, Dijon, and also people who come, Jean-Patrick Masson, Monsieur Gossin, who comes from, who's talking to us from uh, Saudi Arabia. I don't think I've forgotten everybody. So let's talk to Sébastien Fèvre first. Uh, H2 this is a startup. Basically, your first product is a generator, hydrogen power generator. But uh, there's an expertise on a refrigerated trailer. Uh, thanks to the skills uh, here in Belfort. One of the first applications on which uh, we came first in 2019, to being the first in the world, is to replace the diesel generator, which sits on the refrigerated trailer. Uh, these uh, trailers need energy, obviously, to keep food refrigerated and, of course, as well, vaccines and uh, medicines. And uh, uh, it's also necessary to decarbonate this sector. We were the first ones uh, uh, to be interested in integrating a, a generator. It was first a research project, but uh, this has gone beyond now. The uh, research project was conclusive, so the collaboration uh, we started with uh, the researchers in the north of Franche-Comté and uh, several companies in Bourgogne Franche-Comté as well. This allowed us to go further and to industrialize the solution and to implement it. Uh, 
on a route between Normandy and Rangis for food products. And today, we're going to start with the construction of pre-series that was announced. And you will be the technical partner then. Another example of uh, uh, use is on board a fire truck. Fire brigades also want to use this type of uh, technology. So the truck is uh, the manufacturer is made by it. It manufacturer is a, a part of Iveco, and it's called Majorus, and it's equipped with everything uh, the fire men uh, need during an intervention from uh, looking uh, after floods or, or first aid. But there's also a generator to produce electricity. So we're going to have, uh, uh, going to see it. So on this picture, uh, you can see one of the challenges we had, which was to manufacture and hydrogen generated with the same capacity uh, than the diesel or petrol ones. So we had to work on the internal design using uh, the fuel cell to make sure we have the same volume and be able to integrate the cells into the truck as they are today. So we're going to also talk about the stationary. Uh, applications later. Jean Patrick Masson is now online from Dijon. Uh, there's now a very mature uh, project in Bourgogne-Franche-Comté. Some of the uh, rubbish uh, collection trucks uh, are going to be uh, on hydrogen. The project is called DMSE. It's the name of the company which was created between a company an existing company and uh, uh, Dijon Metropole. DMSC wants to implement an electrolyzer and stations to uh, for refueling. And the, the the council, the town council, uh, also wants to equip uh, all uh, the entire fleet of uh, buses and a rubbish bin, rubbish, um, bin trucks. So we are consumers, and we also invest massively on this vehicle. We want to uh, use uh, the help that we get from the ATMSs and uh, the infrastructure and the capacity to be client of our own system. So DMS uh, is Dijon Metropole, as uh, is Smart Energy, and this is together with Rougeau Energy. This company is from this territory. It's a territorial project. One of the specificity of hydrogen is to allow projects uh, to be uh, territorial projects. Yes, Rougeau Energy is our partner. And they uh, will buy some uh, hydrogen-powered vehicles themselves because uh, they're also a building company. So the production of hydrogen in a virtuous way, and there's also a will to power vehicles with this type of fuel. Originally, it's a thought process that comes from several directions. First of all, we want to use the electrical energy produced with the combustion of uh, rubbish. So we have alternators, alternators and uh, one of the uses of this electrical power we are talking about production for a town of 30,000 people, so it's quite a high production. It's a use that we thought was quite 
smart. We are goals, our global goals, to uh, reach uh, carbon neutrality to be in line with the COP21 uh, goals. We do a lot of things on uh, residential buildings, on, on every, in every sector, but we were a bit weak on uh, the mobility. Inventing uh, ecosystems decarbonated ecosystem based on uh, power station uh, working on uh, burning rubbish and uh, we have one of such installation and have uh, energy certificates which would help to develop uh, renewable uh, energy, which means that we would buy certificates to guarantee that all hydrogen used and used will be will come from renewable energies. That's something that was important for us. We wanted to fight climate change, help renewable energies, help the ecosystem as well, which is to allow uh, an industrial sector to develop, and also, as uh, Madame Dufay mentioned, also training. We will need staff, we will need skilled staff to representing all the crafts that will be linked to uh, this sector. Interests, uh, there are multiple interests attached to this sector, and this will also, we also need to answer to the questions of uh, storage of renewable energy. Buses are the ones uh, that are concerned by this evolution. There are few manufacturers. Maybe one of the solutions would be to to, uh, to buy buses in a group uh, with other communities. So globally, there's a lack of competition. Uh, on uh, the bin collection truck, there's no competition. I'm, I'm calling on to the industrial to develop uh, this kind of vehicle. In Europe, at the moment, there's only one person uh, producing these type of trucks or applying to tenders for buses. There's a bit more people, but the cost linked to uh, buying these uh, buses are very high. Uh, a bus is two and a half times uh, more expensive. Uh, than a classical, as we say, uh, bus. We have uh, subventions from ADEM, from uh, the regions, but in France, the ceiling is 45%. So for the community, it's 55% of the cost that uh, we have to pay. So we're trying to reduce costs uh, by uh, creating agreements with uh, with other towns, such as Le Mans and Metz. Other towns want to go uh, the same way as us. So we want it to weigh uh, on the cost. We need to reduce the cost as much as possible. We have a will, and we, are, uh, we agree to spend more money to help the development of this sector. But uh, this must be reach quickly uh, reduction of the cost. Uh, I'm very happy to see the increase in the number of vehicles, which could should lead to a significant reduction. Last thing, I heard uh, that there was a question about the weight uh, in every sense of the term. Uh, if uh, we can have vehicles today uh, working on hydrogen in competition with electrical vehicles, uh, the advantage goes to a hydrogen in terms of uh, the uh, load and the weight of the vehicles. Hydrogen is really advantageous on this point. So there will be two stations uh, open. Uh, one of them could be open to other users. Two stations, uh, one will be dedicated uh, to the bin collection truck, 
And the second one will be dedicated to the buses. Uh, this will be uh, at uh, uh, the depot. Uh, however, we have uh, this. Uh, we have a warehouse next to uh, the railways. The station will be positioned in a way. Uh, if later there are hydrogen-powered train, they can also use uh, the refueling station. First of all, it will be uh, privatized for the buses, and then it will be open later. We will talk now to Christophe Gossin, who is with us, but he's actually in Saudi Arabia. Hello, Christophe Gossin. You are uh, the president of the company uh, which bears your name. You call it uh, Manu Logistic. So you are uh, at the Dakar uh, rally. Uh, you're an, as an observer at the moment. Next year, you will be a competitor. So this turn towards hydrogen, you always uh, produce uh, zero emission vehicle for harbors and ports, etc. But hydrogen is new in your activity. Well, not really. Uh, Gossin is uh, with the fourth generation uh, of Gossin in the company. We started our hydrogen program in 2012 with the idea to float uh, the company, to develop uh, the company, to develop the, the sector. You might know that historically our activity is on uh, the ports, uh, mainly in Singapore, for example, with electrical vehicles of 80 tons. The Singapore harbor is going to buy 80 uh, of these vehicles, and these are automated vehicles. We also have an activity uh, for our airport products, sorry. And they also need clean vehicles. Uh, and another activity is the logistics uh, activity. This is a tractor that you see on the left, which was uh, developed uh, with specialists uh, with the supermarkets like Carrefour and Auchan. It's a tractor, a 38-ton tractor. You can imagine uh, the uh, hydrogen vessel in blue. It's a product that we presented at Ericourt. Uh, we have a few pictures of uh, the exhibition. It was a big exhibition, uh, and you had a lot of people attending. I want to highlight as well uh, that we can also uh, respond to the clients' requirements. We've created uh, logistics centers in uh, airports, for example. Amazon also invests in hydrogen vehicles. And this is a, a financial investment. We also have UPS. Uh, they uh, are currently keeping the old batteries, but the two systems are not in a position. Using vehicles on battery will be for a shorter, uh, shorter um, trajectory. So shorter ranges for 200, 250 a day. Uh, for a higher uh, mileage, we will have uh, the hydrogen uh, power. Uh, these are not in the positions, and all uh, uh, the uh, progress is done on the hydrogen battery are good, and the kilowatt cost of the kilowatt is uh, lower. It's now about 250, 300 euros, and uh, we would go under 100 euros. That means that at some point, the hydrogen electric vehicles will uh, be cheaper, and the maintenance will also be cheaper. You might have seen the latest news uh, yesterday. 
we the statistics uh, on climate uh, came out in 2020 with the hottest year in history. We have a, a specificity. We are the first generation to feel the effects of climate change. And we probably will be the last generation to be able to act. This is important. Uh, it's urgent not only uh, to fight climate change, but also uh, to uh, get uh, on the market. The Chinese uh, were the first one on the solar power or uh, for uh, the batteries to, to hunt as a pack, as we said, for uh, small companies can also be uh, to go and look abroad uh, together to find markets. We have a card to play. We're also going to be uh, play locally, of course. We're very happy at Gossin to have signed with Forestia. We uh, are selling uh, those vehicles, the ones you saw, when the one you saw is going to be on the market in March. And the other one will be in the summer. We also uh, have in mind to produce about 5,000 vehicles a year, and we're also thinking on, uh, on the road-worthy, uh, the road sector. You also have a partnership to enter the truck market. Well, that's a good picture of uh, our will to uh, go into the international market. We uh, signed with Magna, uh, with Hub Power as well. They also have about 40,000 uh, sites installed. Our business model is uh, to transfer technology, to be quickly in a given country. In Saudi Arabia, as you know, they have a record in terms of CO2 emissions, of course, with uh, oil. They have the highest quota. And of course, they have uh, they are fined, they are penalized. It's a good image uh, to see that they are very quick in deploying uh, renewable energies. It's a really interesting point in time. Uh, we could use green hydrogen straight from the start, but they do not have electrolyzers. They do not have the entire ecosystem. I think it's interesting to regroup our uh, know-how in Bourgogne, Franche Comté, and in France, and to uh, export ourselves, to export our technology, our know-how. If we don't do it, other people will do it, the Chinese, the Americans. We have uh, to be able to be uh, to deploy quickly. We're going to finish by the Dakar, the uh, Dakar rally. You're there as an observer. You're assisting a team. But next year, you would like to actually take part with a hydrogen-powered truck. There's a picture. Oh, Christophe Gossin, he's not connecting anymore. So it's an adventure. As you know, the uh, Dakar rally is open to new energies. There are uh, hydrogen-powered uh, vehicles. There's a buggy. Uh, a hydrogen powered buggy, and uh, for 2021 20, 20, 2022, I'm not sure Christophe Gosselin is going to be back online with us. We're going to see if there are questions uh, in the chat. Do we have questions from the public? There are several questions. Uh, 
Alors, en fait, il y a deux types de questions. So there are two kinds of questions. First, on the price of vehicles such as the buses, and also, uh, what what is it? What's in it for France, given that they are not necessarily manufactured in France? So I'm going to ask uh, Monsieur Mr. Masson, because he's the one writing the checks, uh, but we have uh, Monsieur Gosset. So as I said, about approximately 2.5 times uh, the price of the normal bus. About uh, the bin collection truck, for example, we don't necessarily have internal com uh, skills uh, for maintenance of hydrogen vehicles. So uh, within the price, we have uh, included maintenance of uh, five years, so cost of uh, purchase plus maintenance. A, new, a normal one is about 900,000 euros. So there's a, a, an overcost uh, for the buses. Uh, it's uh, lower. It's about 55%. So it's a little bit lower than uh, the collection trucks, around about 500,000 euros. So the uh, funds, the fundings from the states uh, have a ceiling, so 45,000% uh, maximum. Uh, the recovery plan is okay, but uh, we won't see uh, what it's like because we've already reached our maximum in terms of funds. So there's only one manufacturer in Europe for uh, bin collection trucks and maybe three, four, five manufacturers for buses. Uh, for uh, the bin collections, we also already have uh, the tender, uh, the replies to the tenders. So I, I can't really give any answers for buses, though, because this is still open. About the question on the cost, so what's the advantage then? If uh, all these buses and trucks are not manufactured in France and they are twice as expensive, uh, so that means that the more we buy, uh, more the cost will be reduced. But also the contribution is really the fight. Uh, for against climate change and uh, ve using vehicles with clean energy. It's expensive now, uh, but tomorrow, uh, with more uh, demand, uh, they will be cheaper. We are pioneers. Uh, we must go forward. They, we have no choice, really. It's my reaction. Uh, the question is, what what's is the interest and what's the advantage? The advantage is for society. It's huge. There is a French manufacturer, in, uh, hydrogen buses manufacturer in Occitanie. And yesterday, uh, we learned that uh, Renault has uh, signed a joint venture with a, a manufacturer of uh, fuel cells in the States. And some part of the vehicles will be made in France. Are there other questions from the chat? Le bilan environnemental, donc, par, so par rapport à la the environmental footprint. C'est une question qui revient souvent hein, par rapport au it's bilan environnemental. Alors, euh, alors déjà, c'est so, une excellente question. It's a very good question because that's what we're interested in in our research laboratories. It's what we're looking at. So we've just um, launched a project with um, the Institute of Petrol and New Energies. So we're comparing um, 
battery electric systems and hydrogen systems. There's also been um, an ADEM report on this subject, uh, which came out just a couple of days ago, uh, which t looks at the first trends and uh, emphasizes the interest of both solutions. Um, over a life cycle. So since Christophe Gossin has come back to us from uh, Saudi Arabia, so we showed you a, a photograph of the, um, the truck which will be competing next year, so this is a fine adventure. So yesterday, the Dakar um, authorities um, announced the perspectives for the next uh, 12, 3 or 4 years or 10 years. So about 3,000 people um, travel out for the Dakar rally, and the organizers know that um, motorsports uh, such as Formula One, etc., will also have to change the way they work, the way they operate, or even to stop in the. Everybody is looking at becoming more green. So yesterday, the organizers of the Dakar, uh, about 250 television companies uh, which were, were here for the, for the rally, were, um, relayed this event yesterday. So um, there was talk about how we want, we, they can contribute to changing things and, and not waiting too long before they start implementing changes. And hydrogen is one of the possibilities. Obviously, there's also battery vehicles. So we're going to change the engine, which is between the, um, the wheels, replacing the combustion engine with an um, electric motor. So, um, of course, then we have to have a storage tank. I'm hoping that Forestia will work with us for this. Um, so our truck will be um, the intention is not just to, to achieve something in sport, but also to serve as an example. So we have all the components. We want to demonstrate that it's safe um, in operation. We want to show that this is a good project, which is makes all the requisite standards uh, that um, that is safe and possible to use it. We want to um, contribute also to. Um, Federating all the people who take part in the Dakar adventure because they are all aware that things have to change in the next three, four, five years so that um, everybody realizes that nobody can do this on their own. So all the technologies exist, obviously at different degrees of maturity, but. Um, but above all, this is a, a human challenge. So we know that we can do amazing things when we put our minds to it. And the idea is that uh, driving should be a pleasure, that people should still have an adventure, but that the vehicle should be clean. So we think that we can, can build between three and five vehicles, tractors, to um, take part in the Paris-Dakar. And these uh, vehicles will be built at Ericourt in Franche-Comté um, as part of the ecosystem with which we want to involve in the project. And then the later, these tractors will be able to be used for other purposes. So now we're going to talk about the hydrogen plane. So we're welcoming now David Gazio.
Bonjour à tous. Avion Mobusin, donc une marque que vous faites renaître qui date des années 30. Vous travaillez avec Avion Mobusin. Donc, c'est la première fois à la fin des années 20 pour développer une gamme d'avions qui a été créée dans les années 1920, qui était pour construire des aéroplanes pour le public général. Et nous pensions que c'était une bonne idée de recréer cette marque. Donc, first of all, you have Two technologies. There's the hybrid plane. So the idea was to decarbonize aviation, so to provide um, regional aviation, uh, new uses to facilitate transport. So first of all, the propulsion system will be a, a hybrid system, which will be on the market very quickly. But in the last two years, we've also been working on hydrogen propulsion. So the first two models that are being built, uh, the first one is a two-seater, I think, so we have a, a short video to show you, which shows you this plane. So how soon will it be ready? So, the, so this is expected, this two-seater is expected to be ready next year. So, so it should be flying by the, end, by the middle of next year, and then it will be ready to, to market, uh, approved, etc. by the end of 2024. So it's landing and takeoff will be electric, which will make it more ecological. So that will also reduce uh, total consumption of fuel. So how do you imagine integrating hydrogen into a plane? So we see it in the use of turbines, which is a, a well-known um, Probably using um, liquid hydrogen, possibly gaseous hydrogen. We haven't quite decided yet. One of the advantages is weight. It's very lightweight uh, because uh, hydrogen is lighter than batteries. Uh, so the other plane that you can see here in the clouds is a, a transport plane. So this is a business plane which is intended to allow five people to travel for up to uh, 1,500 uh, kilometers so that they can meet. Uh, meet suppliers on their site, uh, or demonstrate a product, or carry freight. So this is a plane that doesn't need an, air, uh, um, an airport. You can take off and land anywhere. And the technology will be. So the it's going to be composite materials for the um, cabin and hydrogen propulsion. So we know that there was, got, there was a stimulus package for zero uh, carbon airplanes for 2035. It's true, Airbus uh, announced uh, the, uh, that they were bringing out um, uh, a range of um, planes by 2035, but we want to go faster then. So we think there will be an option that we can to can offer. We think we'll be able to offer a hydrogen option on our whole range uh, before 2030. So we're talking to uh, academics and industrialists. We've been working with FC Lab which is uh, very close to us, which is based close to us. So we're also working with various companies, which could be suppliers, partners, uh, particularly for the hydrogen system. So thank you. So Bruno Jamais, do we have any other, more questions, any other questions on this subject, on um, hydrogen planes? Alors, des questions? Ouais. Yes. Sur... Alors, où, où est fait le développement Comment vont se passer les tests enfin, en gros, le So, uh, what's the calendar for the tests Where will they take place uh, So, the team of about 10 people is based in Belfort. We have also a few people who work from Paris and Toulouse.
those who are working on development, finance, the commercial side, the strategy side. So we'd like to uh, be based on um, airport in Franche-Comté by 2022. So that's the timing. Any other questions? Pas d'autres questions. En no. tout cas, ce qu'on peut voir, c'est qu'il y a so, beaucoup de projets autour de l'aéroport. What can we see is that the, what we can see is that there are a lot of aviation projects. And it's something that we hear talk of quite often for small planes. So decarbonisation of um, aviation is underway, and uh, hydrogen is, uh, is is more compact. The systems are more compact than batteries, and so that's more promising. So they really, the speeds are realistic. So it's, a, it's a good alternative for traditional fuels. So thank you, David Gelder. So now we're going to look at stationary applications. So, back to Sébastien Fèvre from H2SIS. So, you have a, a generator that runs on hydrogen. So, could it be used for building sites where traditional diesel uh, generators are used? So, are there manufacturers who are interested in that? So, it's true that there are now standards regarding greenhouse gases uh, which are beginning to apply. But the great advantage in terms of usages is that one of the advantages of our system, the hydrogen system, is that the generators are very silent, completely silent. So that means that can be used for particular applications, uh, for example, building sites or for, for film shoots, for example. Yeah. It means that if you're, if you're filming um, something at night, then you don't have to make a lot of noise with the generator. So this is much appreciated by technical teams. Um, it's also more ethical. So, um, for example, as Christophe Gossard was saying, uh, things need to, to change now. We need to reduce CO2 emissions. So when we can replace um, fossil energy is when, we, when it's possible, then we must do it. So this is a, a portable system, uh, allows you to have electricity where you need it, a sports event, etc. Or, so it's called the Boxy, the system. So we are pioneers on this market. So there will be applications at uh, the Parc of Saint-Cloud in Paris for music, for example, for music events. So we provided generators for artists who have produced light art installations. So it's possible to use them um, in the in town centers where and therefore to produce no CO2 and no noise. So we have provided this kind of um, installation, uh, this kind of equipment for the European Festival in, in Belfort. Uh, they've also used, been used by a Toyota in Japan. So you can see there's a connection with the, the general public. The general public can see how hydrogen can be uh, used, how it can be used um, in everyday activities, for example, at concerts or on a, a natural site where you don't want to that you don't want to pollute with a diesel generator. So this is a good solution for general for, for the for solutions for the future. 
So, for example, for the Olympic Games, maybe we won't have the Olympics in, in Belfort, but, um, but you have provided this kind of um, equipment for um, games taking place in a natural setting, I think. For example, the International Youth Games, which had several activities uh, which needed uh, uh, chronometers, uh, timing systems, uh, can canoeing races on rivers. Uh, so this allowed us to uh, provide electricity in the middle of the forest or by the side of a river. So we're, we're gradually managing to position ourselves as a provider of solutions for um, the Olympics in 2024 in Paris. Some of the other competitions during these Olympics will not be taken in Paris, be out in the countryside or in other parts of France, uh, for example, for running uh, races or cycle races, and this will allow us to provide electricity on site. So do we have any questions on these stationary applications? Alors, quelles sont techniques Quelle est la différence de poids So, what is the difference in weight between a, a, a standard generator and a hydrogen generator? Generally, it's about the same for the equipment itself. They'll be a little larger because you need the space for the hydrogen tank. So the, the, the tanks are pressurized tanks. Um, these are technologies that are very similar to what's used in mobility solutions, uh, probably at 700 bars in the future. So that gives um, very good levels of autonomy, but it requires more volume. In terms of mass, it's, it's basically the, about the same as what you get uh, with um, a standard thermal generator. Any other questions? So are there any applications on uh, boats? We have been, um, we have had inquiries about that, yes. So uh, in some cases, retrofitting um, on boats, so you, you keep the, the boat itself, the hull, and you replace the combustion engine with a hydrogen system. So there's an energy boat challenge every year between Monaco and Nice, and we've participated in that. So there are some hydrogen boats, um, hydrogen-powered boats, which would take part in that. Uh, there are also uh, river possibilities for river transport uh, possibilities. Uh, that's a very timely uh, to take an interest in that. Uh, either for transporting goods where there's no um, time imperative, when you can take your time and respect the environment. Also, um, river tourism, so visits or certain places or on rivers. Um, so this is, um, uh, for example, excursions on certain rivers. For example, uh, in this region, we have the Sojudu, which is um, which are attractive tourist sites, so uh, possibly we could, um, if we could propose uh, boats that don't emit CO2, that's an extra advantage. So the last part of our program is about training. Expert, donc so, Daniel, uh, we're Issel, going to talk to Daniel Issel from the CNRS again. So we talked about the University of Franche-Comté because it's very, um, uh, it's at the cutting edge of uh, progress in this area. Is it true? Yes. So we've, various industrialists have talked to it this afternoon 
uh, who uh, have presented a very encouraging future for, for hydrogen. Uh, to accompany those developments, we'll need a lot of trained people. So uh, as a professor at the university, we decided very early on that we should have um, a master's in engineering specializing in uh, hydrogen. So it's a five-year course. Um, uh, so it's, um, it's a very specific course because the students are involved in research labs from their very first year when they're 19 years old. So uh, this is an area where we've also been pioneers in, in this type of training. So there are... Uh, we could say that engineers who train this area are almost guaranteed to get a job. Uh, most of them will find jobs uh, immediately or even before they finish training. So, uh, so this is a good chance for me to encourage students who will be choosing their courses in a few weeks' time to, to consider this. So they realize some very interesting jobs which they could um, train for. So obviously, there will also be um, doctoral studies, PhD studies, which they could follow on to afterwards. There's, um, there's been a study um, in the south of France, in Occitania, which has shown that there, uh, are, there's also a, um, a, a requirement for, for people who are trained at lower levels as well, uh, a baccalaureate level, technical baccalaureate, or a degree level. And, uh, the Franche-Comté region has been um, been engaged in this uh, type of area um, for many years. So they've been providing um, energy-related teaching materials and equipment to high schools for many years. So here's a, a short film about Dole which is produced by the um, local energy um, authority. So, thank you, Daniel Isel. Perhaps you have a few words to say about that. So, what did we see there? So, what we saw was the, this educational vehicle, which is um, actually a vehicle, an electric hydrogen vehicle, which was developed uh, in a European project. There we also saw the electrolyzer, which um, recharges the vehicle, creates the hydrogen. It's um, 
These are vehicles which have been uh, rolled out to uh, high schools in Franche-Comté, which can actually be used as service vehicles, but then they're also used as uh, for practical work by uh, students. So, before you were talking about master's degrees, uh, high school um, education. So, is there anything that we can do for other um, levels of students? There, um, in the local region, at our bachelor's degree students are asked to uh, work with the primary school teachers under their supervision, of course, on um, teaching children about um, energy, hydrogen energy, uh, because we think that small children will go home, talk to their parents, and uh, will talk to them about what's at stake in the energy transition. So I think there's also a project in junior high schools. So does anybody have any questions about training? So thank you very much, Daniel Issel, for enlightening us. So I'd like uh, Mrs. Uh, Dufay, the president of the Burgundy Franche Comté region, to uh, say a final few words. So I think this is important to involve young people in this roadmap. So training is um, our investment in the future. Uh, we, you can't have liberty, freedom without um, training. People have to be trained so that they can create enterprises. So we've wanted to raise awareness with uh, high school students of these issues because I think there's a huge field of possibilities out there. Um, and I'm delighted that thanks to its researchers, its entrepreneurs, its, its schools and its factories, uh, that we are, thanks to all these people, um, at the forefront of, of this, this um, approach to the future. So thank you very much. So, Daniel, you said you just wanted to say one more thing. So we talked about initial training, but there's also um, continuing education and lifelong learning, which is very important. Uh, so we have a, a scheme in Montbéliard, for example, uh, which works with the, uh, the high schools and the local industrialists to train people in these areas. So lifelong learning, for example, uh, in companies, uh, who wish to uh, train their staff in these new technologies. That's another possibility. So thank you for all our speakers and our uh, contributors. Thank you to all the people who helped us to prepare. Thank you to TNT Production. Uh, this morning we ran over time. Now we're finishing um, exactly on time. So we'll see you tomorrow for a third um, discussion on hydrogen energy. Thank you.